Jeremy's mom said the TV was broken. Well, the remote was out of batteries, and they didn't have any more, and since Jeremy and his friends had been watching movies about aliens all afternoon and evening, now that it was nighttime of the world's most amazing sleepover birthday party ever, she suggested that Jeremy and Malia and Birch and Ahmed all go outside and look for UFOs. So that's what they were doing. So far, they'd seen two airplanes, a satellite that Malia thought was a shooting star at first, and more stars than they ever thought possible. No UFOs, though. As the night darkened around them, the depth between the stars increased, and the whole universe of stars appeared, close and clear ones, and distant ones that were no, no more than a smudge in the sky. A silence stretched over the four friends in the dark. Ahmed pointed up and said, do you see that up there? The constellation with the three stars close together? That's Orion, the hunter. I'm going to tell you the story of Orion. Orion was a mighty hunter, a demigod of Greek mythology whose father was Poseidon, the god of the seas and Euryale, Euryale, a princess from the Isle of Minos. And he was the most handsome creature on earth. His skill at the hunt was unmatched. Even in the afterlife, he could slay any animal. But his zeal for the hunt got him in trouble. One day, while hunting with the goddess Artemis and her mother Leto, he threatened to kill every animal in the forest. Mother Earth was so deeply wounded by this threat, that she sent a giant scorpion to kill Orion. The scorpion succeeded. But the goddesses pleaded with Zeus to save Orion, and Zeus agreed to cast him into the stars. So as not to anger Mother Earth, Scorpio, predator of Orion, was sent into the stars as well. The two forever locked in a cosmic hunt. Birch said, Funny you should mention those stars. My dad was talking with my grandmother the other day. She and my aunt were talking about remembering their dad, telling them about those same stars. My grandmother comes from the Wasco tribe. She lives far away in a place called Warm Springs in Oregon. My great-grandfather used to tell my grandmother the story of how Spillet, Coyote the Trickster, made the constellations. One day, Coyote got it in his head that he would learn the secrets of the starry heavens. Now, Spillet was a mighty hunter, and he took his bow and arrow and shot arrow after arrow into the moon, making a long chain of arrows down towards the earth. And then he climbed up to the moon, where he could see the stars so much closer. He began to wonder if he could move them around by shooting them with his remaining arrows. He gave it a try, and to his delight, yes, he could. Then he got an even better idea. He could make pictures with the stars. He moved the points of light to make pictures of all his friends, bear and mountain lion and eagle, all right up there. Then. 
he drew the canoe of the Cold Wind Brothers, and here the canoe of the Chinook Wind Brothers. They race one another across the sky in pursuit of salmon in the river. The Cold Wind Brothers are bullies who come from the east and would see their opponents defeated and show no mercy. But the Chinook Brothers will have their revenge in the warm winds of the west come back again every year. And that's how Spillay made the constellations. They sat for a moment, imagining the brothers and their race across the sky. Then Malia sat up and said, Well, if you think that's cool, wait until you hear what I just read about. <laughs> 